Yeah, because the sun's coming out now, and a good light. Shortly, to organize myself here. My office is a mess. I've got a dirty desktop. I can just do this. Yeah, I've got a This morning we didn't have to do it once. Managed to find roads that didn't have problems. He says, hitting the first issue, first problem. Not even out of camp. Not even out of camp. Yes, the metal detector. No, it's not, it's a shot. That does, it blows all the sand away, only the metal remains. Hold the nyala. Hold the bush in the tree. Just get some animals. Oh, it's going to be chilly. That's the garage. Everything. Everything. Everything going to be all. Everything going to be all right, you know. Did you see those zebra and all the beasts in it? Yeah, also when we saw the zebra was much larger than the beasts. No, but did you go with the guys when they went to town? Hyena tracks. Nyala. Boo. Good afternoon, everyone. Wonderful stuff. Sunday, Saturday. Is it Monday? Uh, Sunday. All day? All day today. But that's why we've got a lot of people we don't normally have. Welcome to Africa. Welcome to Thornybush Game Reserve. My name is Mark, and we're about to head out on our PM Safari. Oh, because I'm facing the sun. I'm fine over here if you look at me. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, for now. That camera, I didn't think about it. You see, I've got to learn these things. Look who's crossing the road in front of us. 
Excuse me, Mr. Nyala. Excuse, uh, hello? People? Hello? hello? <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Proof that you they don't understand English. So this is our quest. And we've come close. We, we came close to Leopard a couple of times. The following their tracks, listening to monkeys shouting, and we've come close to, we came close to the lion yesterday, the big male lion known as Marvin, we came close to him, and I'm hoping we're going to get a chance to find him soon, because I'm itching, but the one thing that I'm really itching for, and I've got withdrawal symptoms from, is elephant, so we're going to go and look for elephant tracks this afternoon as well, and see if we can follow up on them, and get an idea where the ellies are, so at the moment, we're south of camp, and we're going to be making a turn here because we have a herd of wildebeest and zebra and giraffe that hang out here and we're just going to have a look and keep track of them there's one very interesting thing with the herd of wildebeest and that is that there's a calf that is a very unusual calf if we have a calf at this time of the year it's very very unusual so we want to keep track of them who knows maybe we'll even give them a name oh, young as well. um, Billy. Billy yes no. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had that too. Billy the Kid. But from previous contact with people from the UK, they have a thing called Billy No Mates. I think it's Billy. Have you heard that phrase? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe someone in the UK can send me an email at draftquestions at wildearth.tv and let me know. Is it Billy No Mates? I think it is. We've never used that phrase here in South Africa, but it's always fun to have something like that. Because this poor child is on his own, and he's got to run around with this bunch of adults, but he's also vulnerable. He's highly vulnerable, especially at night, to the likes of hyena and lion and leopard. Uh, it's tiny. This poor child is only about a week or so old. I want to go and have a look for him, and then we're going to head north. We're going to cross the river, and we're going to go and see if we can find some of those tracks, animal tracks that are about this big. Round. Yeah, only only one. Yeah, well, the yeah the the front feet are round yeah. and the back feet are very oval, but they're very big. And it indicates a very big animal. And on the way, we're going to be talking about all sorts of things. So let's go. Uh, do remind me next time, Brian, that when I stop and look yeah. at this camera that wants to look at me. It's actually very nice when you look back into this one. Yes. It's actually quite a nice view. Oh, okay. Except when I turn around, then you've got the back of my head. No, no, only for your interest. Yeah, because essentially that's the critter cam. Yeah. And I know I am a sort of an animal at times, but it's... Now, I'm sorry we weren't with you this morning, our morning, which would have been last night, your night, for those of you on the other side of the planet. But uh, we seem to have, I think, we seem to have sorted that issue out. I've got to train him a little bit better. I've got to teach him to browse this side of the trees in front of him. You know. But we take a look at those three markings on his face. We also take a note that his, he doesn't have many spots on his thigh. He's only got two very faint spots on his thigh. That's going to be a good marker. He's an old bull. You can see that because his stripes are fading somewhat, but he's also making... He's, just, look, he's got great... A uh, great set of horns on him. I love Wiki. And now that he's facing us, can you see the thickness of that neck? Can you see the the muscle or the musculature around the shoulders and the neck? He's probably a perfect example of a Nyala bull. A little bit of a mixed feeder browsing and grazing, predominantly a browser. But it makes them quite a successful species in that they, they're not limited to only a certain type of tree or a certain type of plant. Uh, they, can, they can adapt. Not quite as adaptable as the impala, which are so prolific because they're so adaptable or they can adapt so easily during different climate, different times, different drought, yeah. times of drought and stuff. A lovely white, white chevron on his face, on his snout. 
be in the eyes. Okay, Miss Vignola. Great to see you this afternoon. We shall see you again anon. Okay, off we go. You okay, ready? <coughs> now, one thing I have to tell you, I have to apologize for, for being wrong. I, I, I can be wrong about things because sometimes I say things that I have in my head and I think it's right and then sometimes I, I learn that it's wrong. And the one thing that I did make a mistake of that I do have to correct because I don't want to give a misrepresentation and that is the size of Thornybush. I, I overextended the size a little bit. I, for some reason I thought it was about 30,000 hectares. Uh, meanwhile it's about 11,500 hectares and I suppose that can translate into about 25 odd plus thousand acres. So it's a, it's a little bit, it's about half the size that I thought it was. Um, okay, under half. If you want to really be critical of my maths. But um, it's still in a very large area. And later on, when I get to a little bit north of here where I start getting into territory that I'm not too familiar with yet, very important yet in that state. Um, I'm going to pull out the map and I'll show you the map and we can look at it and you can get an idea of what we've covered, what we can cover for the time being and what we potentially are going to cover to find the animals that we want to find to, to get the stuff we need. Now, while we're doing our live drives with all these cameras that we've got, we are also recording, we're also filming for a, a series, a 3D series, which is very exciting in its own right. Uh, and so we need, you know, as much as I, I need to find animals to show you, I need to find animals for footage. So when we're not seeing stuff, it's not because I don't want to show you these things, it's because they're just a little bit hard to find. The bush is very thick. Animals don't just hang around next to the roads. The roads have large areas in between them that are quite dense bush. And it's not that the animals are afraid of vehicles or they keep away from the roads. It's just more like a game of chance. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing that I think is one of the things that keeps me at this kind of thing, whether it's walking or driving and whatever part of Africa it's in, is that we never know what we're going to see. And for me, that is the most amazing thing because when you live in a place like this and you've spent a lot of time, decades in fact, in an environment like this, one would think that it, you know, you've seen it all, done it all, but you could spend an entire lifetime and still not even touch on a fraction of what it's all about. And I'm still finding new things, I'm still discovering new things, and it reminds me that another thing that I have to correct myself on, and I'm still not sure, and that is the big trees that I found down on the river that I, I seem to think were white thorn acacias, acacia polyacantha, and I'm starting to think that maybe they're anna trees. And I really didn't think we'd get anna trees down here in South Africa. I didn't know we had anna trees here. I've seen them from the Zambezi going north, um, but then I haven't spent that much time in Zimbabwe. One of the best places to see anna trees and the, and, and the, the ecosystem that, that, that is part of the anna trees life cycle the elephants and the lions and everything else that lives with them. The best place to see that is a place called Mana Pools in Zimbabwe, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been, thanks to the likes of Hippo Creek Safaris and Nina Weniston and, and her family. Um, right, now we've come all this way and the wildies and the zebra, not surprisingly, are elsewhere. They'll only really come out to this open area. This is an open area south of Camp that's a little bit quiet right now but come later on in the evenings and early mornings they're going to be here on the open because they love this open area at night it's safer for them at night and during the day they'll be in the thicker bushes finding grazing and browsing so what we're going to do is turn around and head for the river across the river and go find that kakidu and then I'm so desperate to see Mm -hmm. 
I've got lots to tell you because we missed the drive this morning. Although Rob and I were out, and unfortunately we couldn't join you on drive this morning, or you couldn't join us for that matter. And thanks to Pete and Brian. Thanks, Brian, for relinquishing your laptop for the sole purpose of allowing us to bypass that little unit that was giving us so much trouble. You should take that little thing and give it to the rangers to use for target practice with their 375s and 458s. Actually, after 1458, there won't be anything left, so... <laughs> I just got this force field around it. <laughs> anyway. Then there's the issue of last night when you lost us. I didn't find Marvin. I found his tracks and we went looking and we went looking and it got us into places where I haven't been yet and then it got dark. And Rob and I were getting cold because there was a cold wind blowing and it, and it was getting dark and we were far from home and I was getting lost and I couldn't see where north or south or east or west was because the clouds were obscuring the moon. I mean the moon was directly above us. It was first quarter last night. And if only I just had a glimpse of the moon, even if it was directly above us, just by the shape of it I could have told direction. There uh, were places where at one point the wind was blowing one way and 10 meters on because of the drainage line it was blowing another way. So, reluctantly I have to say, I got lost. No, I didn't say it, no. What I said was, I didn't get lost. No, I just got turned around. So what I, I was just in the wrong direction. Disoriented. Um, yeah, okay, let's... Thanks, Rob. Rob just mentioned it. We went on a very, very long adventure. We learned some roads. We had to learn them. We had to make sure we knew them, so we drove them twice. So we... <laughs> the weirdest thing is that when we were... When, when we were at the dam yesterday morning, I think it was, yeah. looking for the mail, and was it with you or was it with Rob? I can't remember. Was it? Uh, yes. And then we, no, it was not. And we were off road. No, it was. It was. It was. I'm right. It was with. No, we were very off road. Until we found the road again. There's the wildebeest under a tree, far in the bush there, and we're not going to get it. The wildebeest and impala. I wonder if there's a road. We might be able to get just. I don't know if we'll get closer, but might, uh, the camera might be too high to look under all those bushes. To see just... Uh, see, I'm lower down than the camera, so I can see underneath it. But they're all lying under bushes, deeper in them. So we'll come back later this evening. Come, for, come back and look for little Billy the kid. Anyways, see, this is, this is the problem with the bush. You start talking about something, and then you see something, and then it distracts me. And then I digress. So, turning back to the story, at one point, when we were at that dam looking for that lion, I found I followed a track that I thought was a new road or something, and then eventually it petered out. And I thought, well, I know there's another road further on, but rather than turn around, because I didn't feel like turning around and going back to. We just carried on, and while I was driving, I said to everybody, I said that the one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to be off-road in the dark with the cloud with no way of telling direction because we can and what happens you see you must never tempt fate no let me rephrase it I must never tempt fate me personally because we just did a few circles and it took us an extra hour and a half to get home got home Actually, I'm lucky because we bumped into Hannes, one of the guys in one of the lodges, and uh, I tried to disguise the fact that I was lost. So I, he was having sundowners at a junction, and instead of saying, 
what road is this or where, which way do I go? I said, what junction is this again? And he told me, and then I said, oh. And, and then he said, oh, and then this is the, the, the Hilkley, Hilkley Ring Road, and this is Mungo Wine I said, oh, Mungo Wine Road. So I'm on the right track. He just carried on on Mungo Wine Road. Mungo Wine means jackal, by the way. I'm going to say Swahili. You know, speak Swahili here. But it's part of the course. It happens. You know, we've got 11,000, we've got 25 odd thousand acres, place that I've never been before, and haven't had, I haven't been able, I not haven't been able to, but it's not possible to just go driving around learning roads. It's not like you have a grid of roads like in a city that. <coughs> are all parallel and they all have street names and you, most people these days have a GPS that has Darth Vader's voice and it says 100, minutes, 100 meters turn right right whatever you know, I don't know how the GPS is talking very, very good Darth Vader no, no I, was, I was thinking actually I was thinking of James Earl Jones because there's a wonderful video clip there's a video clip I saw a long time ago of Darth Vader in a, in a recording booth re- doing voiceover for, for the GPS for I think Tom Tom one of the GPS companies and you can hear the director saying okay the next sentence is at the next roundabout turn right so he goes at the next roundabout and the director says cut 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 round about Darth Vader goes roundabout and this goes on and on and on and of course you have to be there because I don't make it sound as funny as Darth Vader can make it sound funny. He's actually got James Earl Jones. Wonderful. So, Sunday afternoon, here in our little corner. Yep, sorry. If I don't stop talking, I don't give Robert a chance to get through to me. So at the time I've got to stop talking every now and then so that Rob can be coming in my ear. Okay, Rob, I'm going to stop talking now. Let's see, which crossing should we use? The one we get stuck in? Yeah. <laughs> No, just the first bit, but the things to talk about this afternoon. Why are we looking for animals that are not really related to the animals so much as they're related to what we do and everything else. First of all, um, just to remind you about email addresses. Hello Sunshine, missed you all day. As far as questions are concerned, please email any questions you have to drive questions, one word, lowercase, drive questions at wildearth.tv and then if you have any comments that are not really questions pertaining to the wildlife and the, the, the things we do on drive please email those to um, feedback at wildearth.tv uh, not that not that crossing eh? no that's the one no that is this crossing this is the, the wild crossing 
because we can. What do we want? Old leopard tracks. Old, old leopard tracks that I saw the other day actually. Monkeys walking around, dragging their tails, making lines in the sand. Baboon tracks and leaving their dung in the sand. And monitor lizard dragging his tail. Hmm. Interesting. And I have to also mention that when it comes to questions, I noticed the other day we had over we had like over 120 odd questions for the drive. It's not nearly enough. Only kidding. It's it's, it's <laughs> overwhelming. Over, it is a little overwhelming. I mean, I, I I would love to just answer questions all the time, but there's times that I've got to talk about things as well or not to talk. But um, I love the question, so, and please, because we haven't answered a question on air, please don't think that you're just going to stop sending questions because we don't get your questions. We're not choosing, uh, well, we're not, we, oh, it's getting caught up here. Um, whether it's Rob or Brian, and soon Aaron as well, Aaron will be helping us out directing. We have to sort of select some of the questions that are either pertinent to what we're doing and where we're going or what we're looking at, or it's got to wait for a convenient time. But it's just not easy, it's not possible to get to all the questions. I'm just going to stop talking for a minute because I need to concentrate. This is a very, very steep and very deep crossing, that this is, and this is the only vehicle on Tawny Bush that can do it because it's a short wheelbase as opposed to the long wheelbase vehicles. The long wheelbase vehicles would not be able to get through here. And uh, I don't want to get the whirligate beetles in the water. I think what I'm also going to do is just stop and listen before we go down in case the branch is cracking. to stop and listen every now and then just in case there's the sound of something. Alarm calls, we listen for alarm calls, we listen for branches breaking and leaves being stripped from trees. In this case we're listening for the rustle of these reeds in the riverbed that will tell me an animal is there. The sudden alarm call of a Franklin that's been chased up by a leopard or finding animals is not all about just driving around looking for the animal. We've got to use all our senses uh, to, to help us. Okay. They're not really going to use our sense of taste to find an animal, but all the other senses. You know, look and listen and smell and touch, believe it or not. Touching dung to feel its temperature and its moisture content. Has, and it's just reconstitute vegetation really, especially elephant dung. 70% of what went in still comes out untouched. Little, there should be maybe a little bit more bird song. You'd think they'd be a bit happier about the sun shining now after it being cold and grey. But maybe they're just so busy feeding because they haven't been feeding for the last two days. That's another possibility is that they've kind of got hungry. Hello, Flutterby. It's a sulfur wing. Deb in Florida. What does Deb want to know, Rob? Uh, while Rob's coming through to me, I'm going to drive through this. Let's go through this little.
I don't know if you get an idea of the angle we're at through the cameras or anything, but it's... That's my phone. I left my phone on. Uh, this is just water, it's kind of mud. <laughs> Piece of cake. Piece of cake. What did they say? Piece of pie. No. No, it's supposed to be easiest pie and piece of cake. But you always get these foreigners who, in the movies, there's always the foreigner that mixes it up that, for comical relief. But Deb in Florida, hello Deb. Nice to have you back with us. Now, which way are we going to go today? I want to go this way, but then we've got a problem with that, that tree and the antenna. But maybe I can make a plan. But Deb wants to know about orchids. Have I found any orchids yet? Funny enough, funny that you asked that. I actually found the other day the root mass <coughs> of an old tree orchid. But not but obviously had it passed on. Baby bark spider. Okay, well, we're just going to have to. Oh, it's going to have to break it. It's going to have to break the antenna. Yeah. I hope it does, though. No, I'm worried now. Maybe just, maybe just clip it. Maybe just break it with a. Break it with this. I don't know, that might work, otherwise the little pliers might work. But rather than put straight on the antenna brake. Which camera are you on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got overhanging br branches. Branches. Branches and branches and grasses and grasses. And we have to release the antenna to get underneath them and then strap it up again see I think these ones are thinner those ones will break I think that white one was it a white one? Loaded, rocked and rolled. Rocked and loaded. Let's rock and roll. I wish I could speak in infrasound. I wish I could listen in infrasound. But I can't speak in in the usual forms of animal communication. I'm going to center myself. Connect with the energy of the planet, even though I'm sitting on rubber wheels and I'm not really connected to the planet. I'm going to try and connect myself to the energy. And let's see. Try and connect with the planet. So, Deb, yes, I'm going to be looking for orchids. That one that I saw, I was actually quite uh, puzzled because it was only the was only the root ball of an old orchid, but it wasn't the giant tree orchid that I'm familiar with. And it wasn't the gall that is formed by 
the mistletoes and the mistletoe family that one finds in trees. And I'm wondering what it could have been. It would have been a different type of orchid. And I don't know how many different types of tree orchids we get. Because I always thought we had the, the, just the two subspecies of the giant tree orchid, which is Ancelia, Ancelia gigantea, and well, one is Ancelia gigantea, gigantea, and the other one is gig, um, Ancelia gigantea, natale, nat, Natalita, I think it is. Natalita, yes. One has got spots on its flowers, and the other one hasn't. So it's known as the leopard tree orchid or the tiger orchid. interesting question. Hi Jennifer and once again welcome back and welcome to our Thorny Bush Drives. Thorny Bush without an E. I did it. I think when I first got you I made a post or two and I put Thorny Bush with an E. Just to stick a flatter now. <coughs> Jennifer wants to know about the family structure of warthogs, which is an interesting thing because they are very family oriented creatures, uh, stewards, and one finds a male with a female and her offspring. And what gets interesting is that her offspring from the previous litter stick around to help her with the new litter to some degree. It's only really the males that, the young males that after a year and a half or so move on. Uh, but the younger females maybe stay around and help look after the new piglets until they then become about two, two and a half or whatever and then they go off and have their own piglets and they will still stay in contact with mom and the rest of the family because they stay in a similar area. But a boar can have a couple of sows that he sires children with and, and become his extended family. But the females of the, the females don't really interact quite very much at all. soft sand. I've got an animal with paws walking here, but it's either because of the wind that it's aged or it just is old. I haven't driven this road for a couple of days. I'll see a little bit further on. It looks like hyena, but it's not very clear. It's just sort of a depression in the sand, and when it gets like that, it's not very easy to tell. We need slightly shallower sand, like here. You get a bit around here, and it is a pussy cat. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, who, I'm going to tell you what it looks like. It's a track around that big, about that big. It's round. If you draw a circular, if you if you draw a line around the edges of it, it makes a circle. And if you look at the toes, the toes are round toes. Oh, that's spider. Web. Sorry, spider. And this cat walked this way. Now, based on the size, you know what I'm going to look 
at another track. I want to find another track. He was walking on this road. No doubt he might, there it is there. And it's here it looks, you see we've had some wind. So wind, ages track. No, it's not there. I thought it was here, but it's not. This is just the Impala going the other way. Um, hmm. Left the road. That's because the road winds and sometimes a cat wants to walk in a straight line. Either a big female or a young male. Yeah. yeah, okay, it's a female. Once again, you know, you have the... It's disproportionate when it comes to soft sand because it'll always look bigger in soft sand than it really is. And... Uh, only when it gets to something going through there. Might be in Yala, it's also like yeah. the white ridge of the back of maybe in Yala Bull. Unless it's uh, rather very dense. a little bit of white since we're on a cat you see the cat is still here yeah uh, it wasn't the cat because the cat's still walking on the road it could be Nanyala it looked like the sort of white ridge of Nanyala bull's mane mission as well to find a tree orchid. And they won't be flowering yet, they're only going to be flowering in a few months time. They were flowering very early last year. Oh, and a squirrel! We nearly got attacked by a squirrel. But I think it thought twice about it and it's ran off again. This is known as the yellow tree squirrel. And it's gone into a little acacia over there. <coughs> and it's gone, it's gone. Sorry. Better luck next time. Okay, I don't know how we're going to do this. is make it sort of wider find it a little bit wider oh no it's not going to work there we go so then made it but left you hanging in the thorn bush. <laughs> so again, make sure the aerial's okay. It's okay if Brian gets caught <laughs> in a thorn tree, but take care of the antenna. <laughs> That's a nice way of looking. You said it, not me. Kitty cat still on the road for me. Please be on the road. Please, please, please be up ahead. Please, please. You know she's gone. You no, know she's not on the road anymore. Maybe she'll come back onto the road. Right in front of us. Have a look at trees, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Just in case there's an impala or a wood dog stuck in a tree. Yeah. It happens, yeah. At the same time, beware of low flying impala and wood dogs. <laughs> it's a beautiful afternoon. It's a such a great day. A little bit of rain yesterday turned into the perfect Sunday afternoon.
Danny wants to know what jackals eat. Is that Danny? What do jackals eat? I don't know, let's see if we can find a jackal. We get black pack, but we also get fired stripe that might be sort of vagrants occasionally. They're a little bit shyer and they they're not really shy. They have somewhat of a different habitat and they are not as numerous as black pack jackals. I would imagine that since I get side striped jackal at home, I would, would imagine that there, there would also be the odd side striped jackal coming out. Jackal are small enough dogs that they can get under the fences where the water Warthog are incredible diggers. And it doesn't matter what fence you have, something was moving in there. No matter what fence you have, Warthog will find a way to get under that fence. And I've actually found, you know, they're also incredibly intelligent creatures. Um, there are a number of, where we are in the western edge of Kruger National Park, there are a number of game reserves that are self-contained, like here in Thornybush. And so, uh, they border on they border on main roads. So also, I mean, there's another reason for having to have a fence is they, they can't allow animals to be wandering on really main um, what do we call it? How, not highways, but main roads between towns and things that are carrying a lot of commercial traffic and stuff. You can't have animals wandering on it. But the incredible thing is that these warthogs, in a lot of these places, they know that they can't venture near the road. You'd never see a warthog run over in, uh, in this sort of environment. I mean, maybe sometimes in Kruger it happens or something. But they come, under, they, they come out of the, the reserves, they manage to dig under the fences. Their bark spider is spinning webs already. It's quite early, it must be hungry. But they dig under the fences and they graze on the road verges because a lot of the properties, a lot of the game reserves that are self-contained, that line these main roads, it's imperative that they maintain fire breaks and they maintain short grasses between their fences and the road because, well, let's face it, when you've got the general public driving at high speeds and things, they, people throw a lot of rubbish out of their windows, including cigarettes and matches and all sorts of things that become a fire hazard and you can't, have, you can't afford to have fires, wildfires coming into the reserve. Now as a result of that, they mow the lawns with a tractor, they keep the lawns, the, or rather the bush, the grass is very, very short. I'm talking a, a, about a 20 meter of, of between the main road and the fences of the reserves and, um, and it's in these places that you find water grazing because they know that <coughs> they can graze with impunity. None of the cats and, or dogs are going to come out of the fences and catch them. And they teach their children to do it too. It's quite, quite incredible. So, we were talking about jackal really. So what I was going to get at, you know, in a long way around as I sometimes do, is that jackal, being canids, being dogs, are intelligent as well, and they use these these little water um, tunnels. They're not really tunnels, but the water know that they have to dig deep enough to get under the lowest of the electrical strands. And jackal are one of the animals that use too, and so are leopards. Now I'm just going to go this way a little bit. Hope the signal's good, because I want to see if that leopard maybe came up to this road. Um, I can just hear the spare tire at the back. I'm just going to go to the uh, okay. I'm just going to go to the back of the vehicle and just secure. I think that tire is getting a bit loose. Excuse me a sec. Maybe Brian can find the bird or something.
cannot believe the mast antenna. Right, now, hopefully, funny how we're on the road that is called Mangawan, which means jackal. Mangawan is jackal, Mangajan is bat. And, uh, I guess it's called Mangawan Road for a reason, maybe not. Maybe just because they look for names. Well, the one thing that I saw when we were on that road, which could have been the road we came up, I'm trying to think. We would have come up, we came up, yes. Okay, we're getting low keys. Maybe up there we'll get better. I know, sorry, mine too. Next time I'll warn us both. I'll remind myself too that when we switch on that radio, or any of the radios for that matter. Yeah, I don't think the leopard came on too. I don't think it came on. Ah, oh, see, I gave it away. I was waiting to see if anybody was going to get what I. But I don't think it's come back up onto this road. Yeah. Okay, well that means that that would have been Mango Mango One that we were on. Oh, sorry, this is Nyaleti. We were coming up Mango One. We go back. Good architect. I mean, we did have between 24 and 29 dBs here a couple of days ago, so I don't know why it's dropped. Maybe the cloud and stuff. Up there. That goes down towards other drainage, and that's where we lose signal because it goes down. When we get much caught up and running, then we'll probably go that's a Futsu road. Futsu means portage. Just go back down Mango One. She might have gone off the road and then back onto the road. Fungu 
way. And then there was uh, this one. So that is the foot shoe. And then this one would be. No, that would have been Rus. This is Mutsu. This one, which is not on the map. This is where it gets difficult because there's one or two roads that are not on the map. So this might be Mango One because it because it continues. That means that that one is Dombaya. Then the third one doesn't exist. There's this bush will up over there. Okay, anyways. What do I see here? Come on, just As far as Facebook is concerned, because we want to also be part of the social networking of, well, it's available and we want to use it and we want to be a part of your lives as well for the next few months. So as far as all the wildlife sightings are concerned, as far as anything that we see here, and please if you're going to do any screenshots and post anything, the, the place to do that is... Thornybush Private Nature Reserve on Facebook and of course anything regarding crew and anything regarding non-animal stuff will be on the Wild Earth page on Facebook and that's quite important so we, we want to concentrate on those two because there are a bunch of you know, others and I think to rather consolidate everything in one place is going to be the best so that's what we're going to do Thornybush Private Nature Reserve's Facebook page and Wild Earth Facebook type that Facebook page for animals and crew stuff respectively. And I will eventually get around to I'm gonna try and post on those pages as often as I can. And I'm going to try and sort of write a little blog with every now and then when I can. Well, not when I can, but when I've got something to write home about. And I'm looking forward to interacting on, with you on those pages. I mean, if you want to ask questions, excuse me, ask questions about the wildlife here, please do so on the Thornybush, uh, Thornybush Private Game Reserve. Well, private Nature Reserve, TPNR, Thornybush Private Nature Reserve page. And, and trouble to that, just to give you an idea of what it's all about here, Thornybush Private Nature Reserve is this big 11,500 hectare reserve that has a number of lodges on it. And the lodges all fall under a, a, a group known as the Thornybush Collection. Through here. Okay. Pause there. I wanted to put the track here at this junction. Nothing really. Janet. 
imagine a cat which isn't really a cat. All that does kind of fall under the cat term. There's some family of the cats. The, that's actually the family of the mongoose, the viverids. Viveridae. Um, let me think, what should we do from this country? We've got... Yeah, but I'm just thinking, if I'm looking at my map, we don't get signal going down there. Yeah, this is called um, Nanzani or something. And we want to go down there. Let's think to this part. Also, we're going to get a nice view of the mountains. Because if I go that way around, we might lose signal. But if I go this way around, on that next bridge, we still have signal up on that bridge. But I know that we have dip down here, we're not going to have the signal. We're going to probably drop as we go through the dip. So that was Angwa Road that follows the train. I wonder if we should try to follow that Angwa. We're trying to decide, trying to get away to you too. Uh, you know what, I think we've got to go back. Actually, there are no tracks here of this cat. And I think I'm going to go back because I've got a feeling that it's moving and it's and it, where it left the road, it's going to come out of one of these roads. So I'm just going to go back. But, um, so many times in my life, I've driven the road, turned around, and gone back and seen things that went there when I was there two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes prior to that. Because we our own time we didn't see as much as we saw on the way here, which was virtually nothing. Um, Animals move all the time, and it's all about timing. It's all about. Can you imagine? We've got this vast area of bushveld. We can't see that far off of the road. We've got a relatively short distance off the road that we can see, and it's all about being in the right place at the right at that moment. And an animal is coming close to the road or about to cross the road, or even for that like cat actually walking on the road. Um, I saw a dark shape and it's got my heart beating a little bit, but it's just an extra dark bush. Any of you were with us a couple of days ago when I was following leopard tracks to South of Cap and I was getting so excited because baboons were barking and the monkeys were shouting and the water came out onto the road and I was getting excited because I thought we were going to catch up with it and then I learned that, that it actually continued on south and gone through the fence into the neighbouring property and it just so happens that the neighbouring property belongs to a friend of mine 
at Timbervati Safari Lodge. And Ryan has been setting up uh, camera traps. Pulling me. Sorry. But it's such a convoluted thing, it's supposed to be just simple. He's picked up three Mafazi somethings west of something. It doesn't help. He mentioned Ledwood something. Anyways, the three Mafazi somethings. Mafazi means female, by the way. So I was talking to Ryan and I've mentioned to him, so Ryan, you know that uh, one of our leopards came through the fence towards uh, into your property. He says, yes, he knows about it. But the very funny thing is that when I learnt about it, I said, I bet you that leopard's gone through the fence to get one of the warthogs that mows the lawn. <laughs> what happened? Leopard went through the fence and got one of the warthogs. But sadly, not on Ryan's property, actually on Ryan's neighbor's property. Caught a leopard there, so that's why that leopard wasn't around for, wasn't around for a couple of days. I know. No, it's just too much static. I'm trying to stop and listen for a minute. While I'm looking, I'm going to actually listen for... No, we need to do this further up, closer to where those leopard tracks were. We want to listen for this. Uh, for, for... Alarm calls or something, a bird shouting, a squirrel shouting, anything shouting. More or less up to where the junction is of the road where I saw these leopard tracks now. I knew to find it was to really concentrate hard in the area where it was. Well, I can go off-road when we find it, I can't just go off-road willy-nilly and drive over a bush just thinking that it might be there. It's only if I really know where one is that I can go off-road or I can follow it. And it's a very important thing to do. You, know, you can't just have vehicles driving off-road for no reason. going to stop here. I'm just going to consult and see if I can find a lead with something. But it might be a lead with dam or a lead with and it might be something within our range that we can get to. Okay, so this is where our tank is coming. We're going to stop and just listen to the beautiful light. I wish I could find you something to on camera while I'm doing this. I'm only joking. I'm assuming it must be somewhere north. The interesting thing about all of this is that there's a north and a south of Thorny Bush, and the northern section actually has a different radio channel. So I know at least that when I'm hearing something on the road here, I know at least that it's down here in the southern region. But there's got to be a few hundred, several, few hundred names of roads and dams and pans and cut lines and places. I don't even think three months is going to be enough to learn it all. But I'm certainly getting a good idea. And every time someone mentions something on the radio and I look it up on the map, it, it'll stay in my mind and I'll be able to remember it. But I doubt there was anything really down south here. I think it must be something a little bit north. Let me do this. 
administration. If anyone's interested, there's some Ingwe track heading up uh, Mangawan towards Nyaleti. Um, trying to follow up. I don't know if anyone's in the area. And if someone can give me a lock on those in Gala, please. a leadwood anything. Normally you find a leadwood. There's always going to be a leadwood dam or a leadwood road or Maybe it wasn't. No, it wasn't live, and nobody's answering me. Maybe I'm not getting through because it's in a particular place. That's fine. We do it ourselves. So a cat came up this way. Why did you this side? Which side? Yeah. yeah. That's where we came from. This is where the tracks were. So I'm going to go back down this road. Just in case she's coming back. Yeah, maybe stop somewhere. Then we'll come and have a look on this road again. The length, the, 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 the height of this, the grass is here, in the bush. If she's not immediately next to the road, I'm not going to see her. She could be lying two feet off of the road in these long grasses, we wouldn't see her. So it's imperative that we're very careful about looking and noticing that maybe a little flash of white of the tail if she's flicking her tail. I did earlier on when we were coming up, I saw something walking towards that turn right now. But it was so close then it would have been on that road by now. again Rob get that these grasses are long man this is a slight height advantage
Hi Jody. Jody in New Mexico. Another old friend from days gone by. Interesting question from Jody. All questions are interesting. But Jody wants to know when a leopard goes through the fence, does the owner of that property bring it back? Uh, I guess the simple answer is no. One of those questions when I can I'm not gonna start the answer with a depends because there's no depends in this one. No. There's no interference whatsoever. And leopard comes back of its own accord. Leopard doesn't the leopard just includes what's on that side as part of its territory and probably actually it was the male. Probably knows that there's no comp there's no competition on that side. And uh, oh there's a busted road. Are you going to stay on the road for me, Buster? No. But also there are a bunch of herbivores and smaller properties outside the reserve that aren't really accustomed to predators and but this makes, makes for easy hunting. Where did you go, Pussy Tennis? Of course, the other part of that answer for Jody is to do so, Jody would mean that they would have to dart it put it in a vehicle, drive it back here, and then give it an antidote. And the stress levels of an animal just to go through that, when it's just going to wake up and go back through the fence anyway, because it's been doing it probably all its life. Um, there's that aspect to it. The other aspect is the, the thousands of rand that it would well, we, this, our currency is the rand. We're currently trading at about well, around about it's wavering around nine rand to the dollar, um, about fourteen to the pound, about eleven or so to the euro, and it would just cost a lot of money for the drugs to be able to do that. But I think the main thing about it all would be the, 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 the stress factor on the animal. So it's, a, it's, it's really an impractical thing to do. There are, you know, funny that you should ask that because there are places where where some animals might break through. It's imperative to actually get them back. I mean, elephant, for example. Uh, if elephant breaks through a fence, it's important to get them back. And then helicopters are used. You don't use drugs and vehicles and things under those circumstances. It's a case, then it's a case of trying to herd the animal back, physically herd the animal back. I remember I've been involved in trying to get things like zebra and other animals back through a fence and where they were in danger outside of the reserve and it was, in, it was for their own benefit to get them back into the reserve. Here, neighboring properties are still wildlife areas. That if it was a case of the breaking through the fence and going into a rural area where there are children and goats and cattle and, and the leopard can pose a threat, under those circumstances, yes. That under those circumstances, it would be almost imperative to do that before somebody gets a bee in their bonnet and that. And they decide to shoot the animal because unfortunately that happens. We had an incident in the Sabi sand where we lost a couple of male lions. Oh, there's a kudubul. Not a very big one. Oh, and he's gone. All these ox pictures have run away. Before you can even turn the camera. Okay, maybe try and move a little slower. But that's just the nature of kudu. In fact, it doesn't really matter how fast or slow you move. Kudu, I've had this here. No, the fact that we looked at it. We made eye contact. I've had this on walks and drives all my life. But kudu particularly, if, if you pretend not to notice them, they won't move. Because they have this, this, this policy that if I don't move, nobody's going to see me. And... Um, as soon as you reckon, as soon as you make eye contact, it knows that it's been seen, and that's when it runs away. So it's, it's 
hard to do or hard to see sometimes. Also, it's, it's the terrain. When it's a little bit more open, animals are a lot more relaxed. But in this closed bush, which is ideal leopard, leopard country, by the way, it, uh, it makes animals a little bit nervous. When there's danger, danger is right there. So they have to react quickly. When it's wide open spaces of open grassland or where the grasses are not so thick and predators can't be lurking, uh, then animals, even the same individuals, will be a lot more relaxed. I'm noticing particularly with giraffe, um, whether on foot, particularly actually on foot. They'll actually get this, uh, maintain their safety, what they feel is their safety distance, their comfort zone. But there's no such thing as a comfort zone in this bush. There. You go straight into their danger zone. A flat zone. Get a little bit closer than the flat zone, you get the fight zone. Because sometimes attack is the best form of defense. So sometimes when you're really, really close to something. Okay, our first cat is not coming out of the bushes tonight. What we're going to do, let's go, let's do a loop. We'll go, we'll find that other road that goes back up to Mangawan. I'm not even going to look at the map because I know this spot. We're going to find that, that other road that goes up to Mangawan. We're going to come around. Now, people who have never been to Africa, people who have never, whether it's driving themselves through a national park or being on safari with a with a profession with a guide, will know that it's not constant animals. It's not. Uh, well, it depends on where you are. I'm sure, I guess and I've been to Serengeti and places up in East Africa where. You, you very, very seldom get this kind of bush. It's mostly open and vast open areas. And just you can see for miles. So you do tend to see a lot more because it's more open, so you can see much further. I think if we, if we had to, if we could see deeper into the bush, and there weren't so many lower bushes, we would see a lot more animals. But it's only because our, our vision is limited. But one knows that you actually have to work a little bit find animals. There are not animals everywhere all the time and the animals are not always in the same place. It's imperative that they move around and they're in a different place every day. This is one of the exciting things about being in the bush, actually. So maybe a lot of people who are joining us for the first time might be getting a little um, despondent maybe or maybe not quite understanding how all of this works and expecting to see a lot of animals in a constant go from the giraffe to the zebra and then to the elephant and then to the lion and just drive around like a safari park. Um, but I think the key word there is expect. And rule number one about visiting Africa and about being in the bush is don't expect anything. Because then whatever you see is going to be a wonderful surprise. A lot of the lodges market the big five or they... they Deb wants to know if we've seen elephant in giraffe. Um, not yet elephant, Deb. We've seen some giraffe. Rob and I spent some time with three male giraffes this morning, getting a little bit of footage while we were trying to get the broadcast going. Just because we couldn't broadcast didn't mean we didn't go on a drive. We still went on a drive. I still went looking for tracks and elephants and lions. We still, because I wanted to find something for this afternoon. And unfortunately, it didn't 
materialized. We didn't, we didn't find anything. Nobody found anything this morning, uh, except some buffalo. But I think the weather's going to sort itself out, maybe we're going to see more wildlife in the next few days. But the fun of it is, the fun of it is not knowing what we're going to see. It will be pretty boring when we just got into a vehicle and we drove straight from one species to another. Of course, it will be great for those of you who are never going to come to Africa because then we could almost guarantee that, okay, today we're going to show you lion and we drive straight to the lion. And of course, what that means is that we're always going to have content. But it's artificial. It doesn't give you a true idea of what Africa is really about. And this little part of Africa, it's all about looking for them. Beautiful light. This is the light we need. Is it Paula? Paula. Oh. Uh, moving deeper into the quarry, the quarry thicket. Hello, Sally. Sally in New York. Hello, children. Okay, bye, children. <laughs> yeah. And all the skittles are there. Could be because the leopard's been in the area. Sally wants to me to find a tree that has the thorns. Well, there's one, but I want to find one in sunlight. Sally wants to find the tree that has the thorns on that the giraffe eat. Well, it's giraffe and impala and kudu and lots of animals eat on the thorn trees. In fact, you can pretty much be sure that if a tree has got thorns on it, it's a highly palatable leaf. That is why it has thorns because it needs a physical defense to limit the amount of browsing, to limit the utilization by animals. So, um, well, here's one, but it's dead. One of the acacias. Dead because the bark has been stripped at the bottom. I'll find you others. But we have a lot of acacia species here. number of them. I'll have to start counting one of these days, but at least a dozen or more different acacia species, all of which are browsed by giraffe and other animals. And then there are also trees that have spines, but not thorns, that are also browsed by animals, and they also have the thorns as a result of uh, adaptation to over-utilization by, by browsers, a means of defense, so that animals don't put their heads right into the tree and eat too many leaves off of the tree. Uh, I'm just going to go forward because there's a flower down here. I showed you a flower a couple of days ago. Now I wasn't really sure. I'm still, got to, I'm still familiarizing myself with, with the, ca the, ca the capabilities of this camera. Um, and it's a and it's zoomability, capability and zoomability. Yeah, but they're little dots, no doubt. No? I need to have a look at the screen so that I can get a better idea. Because I'm going to have to. Um, it's still a bit small. I want to. There are enough of them that I can pick one. <laughs> Just one little one. I don't know what. What's your closest focal distance? Yeah, very, very 
actually going to put this in a glass, maybe it'll root. I'm going to hold it close so that it's steady. Is that a good place? Yeah. Does it pull the screen better? Yeah. You can get a better idea of color and shape. This was the lobelia I was telling you about yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Um, on that one grass that would be the day before. For me, life is just one long day and I can't really remember things that they are. But there might be seeds there. It's really beautiful. It's a very, very pale blue lobelia. We were seeing some white ones earlier, or well, yesterday or the day before we were seeing some white ones. It's actually one of my favourite little flowers because of the different colours you get in the lobelias. Very pretty for the ladies. Sometimes the guys get jealous because I don't find them. What could you find? Nuts and bolts. <laughs> Rusty, and <laughs> Rusty nuts and bolts. Um, okay, it's for some of the guys if they want flowers. No. I'm a guy, I like flowers. I love flowers. I don't know which Lobelia. Lobelia is the genus. I don't know which species it is. I'm not going to look in the book right now. But I do want to, one of these days, come and take some close-up photos, some macro shots. But I don't have them at home, and I don't recall seeing them in the Sabi sand, so we probably have them. Are we back on Nyaleti Road? Nyaleti, the Shangan word for the stars. game reserve nearby between here and the Sabi sand called Manyaleti which is the place of the stars but I reckon we can see just as many stars from here as we can in Manyaleti well you just have to come to Africa and join me one day to give you a star talk because it's not going to work we don't have the cameras for it but we have a very interesting sky at the moment. What we have is we have the transition between our summer and winter skies. In our summer sky, the dominant constellation is Orion, and our winter sky, the dominant constellation is the Scorpion. And at the moment, we've got Orion setting to start the sunset, and the Scorpion rising. Now, the other important thing about Orion and the Scorpion, Scorpio is that Orion lies in the outer rim of our galaxy, whereas Scorpio lies right in the center of our galaxy. Or, or let's put it this way. When we look at Orion, we're looking out of our galaxy. And when we're looking at the Scorpion, we're looking into our galaxy. And it's truly wonderful when you, when you contemplate the, 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 the enormity, the, the I can't even think of the words to describe it. The magnitude of our tiny little piece of the universe. Because everything that we see with the naked eye, bar two little patches of cloud in the sky, everything that we see is only our galaxy. And our galaxy is just one tiny little spiral whirl of stars in a vast universe of galaxies. And that's only this universe. Yeah, you know, the human, but the, 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 uh, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, who knows, we might be sitting on the head of a pin with speck of dust. Anyway, so it's an interesting time of the year when we've got the galaxy turning right before our very eyes. Just after sunset, we've got the edge of the galaxy. Well, I know it's not the galaxy that's turning, but, but it's the Earth that's turning, but it's the, 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 the appearance thereof that seems to, seems to be that the galaxy is setting 
the outer rim is setting and then the, in, the, the internal density of the stars that form our galaxy are rising. And the two little patches of cloud that I mentioned that one can see that are not our galaxy are actually two other galaxies known as the Magellan clouds or the Magellan, M Magellanic, the Magellan clouds. Magellanic, uh, yes, named after Magellan. <laughs> Magellanic, Magellan, yes, the Magellan, the Magellan, Magellan's galaxies. Neither one of which are actually spiral galaxies. Both of them are actually cluster galaxies, infinitely bigger than ours. Hello, Franklin's. The Franklins in the road. They come out onto the road in the evenings to dust bath, get rid of all the parasites that they've picked up during the day walking through the grass. It's still set to find some grass seed on their way to bed. Gone, but I'm just trying to sort out my earpiece because you're not here then. No. Coming through the other earphone, not the one that I've got wired up. That's right. I know, and they know this. Channel 8, They're talking about something on Channel 8. Look at it. Try and get some idea of where something is. Okay. Franklin is on home. Not caring. Thanks, Rob. Cat hasn't come out here. I'm not finding any new tracks, so I'm thinking that maybe those tracks were earlier today. The leopard went to ground and has laid down. I'm only going to wake up now. I'm about now, this time of the day.
there, there, in the road. Way to go, Marcus. Hello, baby girl. Here you are again. Okay, we're just gonna stop to look, so I'm gonna stop. This is Africa. Beep, beep. See what I mean by that tail? It's got a brain of its own. It's almost like a lemur. Oh, you're beautiful. You are beautiful. I don't know who she is. So please <laughs> give me a little while to get to know these girls and boys. But uh, see, it pays to go backwards and forwards sometimes. Up and down, up and down. Look at that tail just sticking up in the air. Hello Chinspot Battis and hello Golden Breasted Bunting. We can't stop and talk to you right now until we've got a cat on our hands. Yeah, I see she's a little bit too kind. I wanted to do that. Trotting a little bit and I'd better just call this in. Earn some brownie points with the guide. But no, also because I need to. And once the road straightens out, we'll get to see her again. Our stations, if anyone's interested in Ingwe heading east on uh, Nyeleti. Yeah, this is Mark Wild Earth, uh, and I'm Ingwe heading east on Nyeleti. Okay, copy. I'm also east of Dombay and Mango One. I'm heading up well, heading east. She's shaking, I'm so excited. I don't know what road this is that she's turning. She's turning down this other road. I don't know what it is. As soon as I get a little bit close, she trots. She's just keeping her distance. So I don't want to get too close and, 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 and push her too much. So when she's moving like that, I'm actually going to just stop. See, as soon as I stop, she slows down. And I, but I don't want to lose track of her either. So let me just see. We are heading down with Ufneleti. We're probably on Rus. Any stations close to this Ingwe sighting? Maybe there's something up ahead that's watching. I think we should risk this road. Have you got it on cam? Yeah, I know. There's, if I could just go. Um, Worry that if I start and go forward to get around this bend 
And I see she's dropped her head and dropped her tail. It could be that she's watching, that there's something up ahead. Okay, now she's going around the corner. We can. And I hope you know, maybe we'll lose signal going this way, but for the trial. No stations, the thing where it's now turned off, I think she's heading north up Roost Road, I'm not sure which this is. Okay, let's I'm trying to keep my distance, I don't think she's very familiar with our vehicle. Where's she going? coming to Ingwe, we just, uh, I'm just fed up with a pan here, so I'm not sure which this pan is, but you probably know which I'm talking about. No, a very small pan. She's watching something now. Her head, when her head goes down, it is on flat yet. Trying to control the tail, trying to keep the tail down. But that little twitch at the back of the tail, the end of the tail, tells me that she's concentrating on something. That, uh, that sometimes is a giveaway. Animals will see that little bit of white. Um, you find young leopards sometimes will flick their tail up over there. And uh, give themselves away, and of course, oh, she's lying down. Beautiful girl. Right. What we're going to do since she's now relaxing, I think there's something in the bush that she might be watching. So we're going to try and position ourselves on the other side of this pan, and. Yeah, she's watching something. Literally two seconds before you can, she went in through here. I see him. And I can't get much further in. He's not going to do this here.
show she might have gone up to this termite now. Now Brad, can you see this big schedule in front of me? Because it looks like she's watching something just to the east. Maybe you can make your way from there. I'm going to try around the other side of the stand. What is the what is the name of the stand? I wonder if we can be able to make it through this mud. I think she's gone mm. to that termite now. It's possible. Nice, that's fine. She relaxed with us. But I think for me that was the most important thing. Is that it really? But then I'd see those little chestnuts at the back. But that when he came around the when she came around the pan, really looked like a the neck looked like a male. But uh, the track we were following the female. Maybe she's just an old female. Maybe she's Malawan. Maybe that is Malawan. I mean, she's 11 years old. Okay. Okay. The, the same group that I'm on. over that lock for me. Uh, I'll see if I can make it round there but I've got a uh, signal problem. So we're just going to... Uh, Robert can just keep me posted. Uh, this will be and I'm going to pull out. Okay, copy, thanks. Um, Rod, how are we doing? Well, can't hear me if we haven't got signal, I suppose. Okay. 
So we caught up with her, she was, I don't know where we lost her, we caught up with her at the pan, she was lying down in her grasses, she was, she, uh, she laid down for a little bit and but I walked around the pan and she's come north and this is right on the edge of our signal head but she might be back on this road. Yeah, she's a beautiful cat, happily. And what we're just going to have to do is, she's one of the Nature always rewards those who are paid. Be patient and you shall be rewarded. Brad, come in. So, probably, I have on that loop, I think it's the same loop, but um, unless I bump you, I'm going to leave the site and it's not hitting that. Thanks a lot. Enjoy. Mile one. Yeah. Oh, 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 So I'll stick around after all until the next pair of my wife over She lay next to the pan, and then just before you got got uh, she got up and she walked around the back of the pan. We got some good footage of that. And yeah. I've had a bit of a, a few days of looking following the tracks and not finding it. That's a really, that's a really spent the whole afternoon on the track, coming up on the roof. I don't know. I asked. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and see. Cool. Thank you. girl coming back into the signal rain. Now I believe this gorgeous cat is about 11 years old, if I'm not mistaken. She's had four litters, four, lit four litters, and two litters have been, have, she had three cubs, 
two litters. She had two cubs. The two litters of three cubs, there were two males and a female. And the two litters of two cubs were two males. Her last litter, and I'm not too sure, I must just check on that, where her last litter was. But her last litter, the two young males, uh, were two young males. And one of her males from one of her litters of three from a couple of years ago, is still with, still hangs around and still joins her on kills and things. And, um, it's rather unusual. We have seen this before when, uh, when we were in the Sabi Sand Game Reserve. And, uh, we had a leopard there who used to hang around, or she had previous litters that hung around with her. And, um, it's not really that common that, that that does happen. Although maybe it's, it is a little bit more common than we imagine. It's just that maybe nowadays we're following leopards a lot more, or there are a lot, there's a lot more presence with leopards. Leopards are calming down with vehicles. You can see already she's calmed down with us. Uh, when we first found her walking on the road earlier on, at this distance she was trotting ahead, and what I did then was I slowed down, I stopped the vehicle, and basically what that was doing was telling her that I'm okay, I'm not here to chase you, I'm just here to, to see you and I don't want to interfere in your life. And I think the, the key fa factor there in, in her accepting this vehicle was when she was lying at the pan. I'm really sorry that at that moment that she was at that water hole, she didn't drink, sadly, but at that moment that she was at the water hole, she lay down in the grasses and we stopped and we were quiet and she was looking around and she, I think she finally realized that we're not too much of a problem. She's quite sure, well used to the vehicles around here and most of them are diesel Land Rovers so they do have a different sound but there's a completely different look about our vehicle that maybe is a little bit intimidating to begin with when they first see us and can't wait until we see an elephant for the first time to see how they might react. And I believe these elephants are a wonderful elephant to watch. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let Brad leapfrog us again because uh, we do have to give preference to the game drive vehicles because in face it, we do have some guests here that are paying a lot of money. So I'm going to pull off onto this side Brad can go on ahead. Such a magical thing to see. Thanks. Pardon? No, no, I think we'll we'll start heading back. Enjoy. So, make note of looking at the Thorny Bush Private Nature Reserve Facebook page later on. I'm going to post these photographs. I'm going to try and zoom some of them in. I'll try and post a, a couple of them. I don't know how great how they big photographs. It's not award-winning stuff, but it's identification. It is more important to me to take ID shots than it is to take award. And there are there enough photo photographers out there to tell your guests to sit down. Um, so, I'm just so excited to I can't believe it. Can you ever believe it? I heard one of the rangers say he had a very unpleasant experience this morning trying to follow tracks, just not having luck. And I know exactly what he's talking about. I think a lot of you who who have been with me when we've been tracking animals and we follow tracks and we follow tracks and we just can't find them. It's happened to us twice with this leopard, with leopard, this one and her son. Her son was the one that went through the fence, I think. Um, and caught a water dog outside his neighbor's property. But all my life, I mean, 40 years, no, maybe not 40 years, 30 years, 30 years of tracking animals and spending hours and hours and hours and this, the, the funny thing is, is that 
the longer you track an animal, the longer you try to find it, the more intent you are of actually finding it and become so obsessive about finally getting it, especially when you've got guests and guests are getting hyped up because you're on the tracks and they're fresh and you can hear things shouting and you just end up not finding it. And it of course it's a disappointment for the guest, but it's even more of a disappointment for the guide because well, it, it's not that it reflects on it, or, 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 or people might think of incompetence and things like that, but it's it's just because that is how it goes. I say it again: this is Africa. This is not a set up set of circumstances. This is a this is a, a wild environment where these these animals are. It's not like they've been put here. These animals have been animals of the species have been here forever and ever. So. If anything, it's just the fences that have come along in time. Maybe a long, long time ago, there might have been people trying to farm cattle here. But I think they would have found that it's a little bit difficult to farm cattle when you've got to deal with lions and leopards and things. So we're going to head down this road. I know it's a pretty awful road. This is where the buffalo herd was, going down to Alveda Pan. down this bumpy road so I hope you don't mind not having a sunset I gave you a leopard instead I think the leopard's better than the sunset I think we'll have a sunset tomorrow I'd rather have I'd rather have leopards than sunsets but well no it's not a matter of one or the other it's just a matter of when we've got a leopard we could forego the sunset how about this I'll make a deal with you because we missed sunset I'll show you sunrise in the morning suffering from elephant withdrawal, satisfied with my leopard craving, and I'm sure I've satisfied the leopard craving of a lot of people out there. reacted. Did you see that, man? Yeah. I remember one time up in the Timbavati, I was doing a game drive and it was long grasses, almost like this, but a very big open area. And there were guinea fowl all around us and they were quite relaxed guinea fowl. And the next minute I saw this caracal crouched in the grass inches away from a guinea fowl. And I said, oh, caracal! <laughs> and you can guess the rest. Guinea fowl flew away, caracal ran away. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why switch that off now, I don't need it anymore. One of the reasons why we left the site is because only two vehicles are allowed to whip an animal. One of the reasons why these animals can allow us to watch them and why they become relaxed is because they're not pressurized by vehicles like they are in places like Serengeti and Ngorongoro and some of these very large parks where animals are surrounded by vehicles where there's, there's no scruples at all. And we've learned here in South Africa, this, was, this goes back way back to the 80s when I was a guide in the 80s. Uh, first, when I first started guiding 30 years ago, 20, 30 odd years ago. We learned through trial and error what you can and cannot do. The rules that, are, that exist today 
are rules that we discovered through making mistakes and through doing wrong things, realize that we've got to behave a lot better. We've got to, we've got to try and um, regulate behavior. Otherwise, we, 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 we were in, a, in essence, when you, when you don't behave, you're actually counterproductive to what you want to do. When you're crowding animals and you're chasing animals, uh, the only thing they learn is, is that you're a danger and you're a threat and they don't and, and you cause a spark of adrenaline and you basically they just don't like the vehicles. So the only way through trial and error that we learn to watch these animals is first of all to limit the number of vehicles with any animal, particularly the big animals at any one time. And it was through that that we started having better sightings that the animals were becoming more and more relaxed. And it was through that that the, the eventually some of the, you know, I, don't, I don't even know how it started, but it was back in the late 80s that the Field Guide Association of South Africa started. And it was a, a, established this ostensibly to, to regulate the guards and their behavior in the ratio that if you were qualified for guard, the guard, you had you understood and you, you had abided by certain rules set out in terms of how we behave in the bush. And uh, it has grown from strength to strength over the years as the guarding fraternity has has has, has virtually exploded in terms of the number of lodges. I mean, in those days, back in the 80s, there were a handful of game lodges in the Sabi Sand. There were maybe two in the Timbavati. Uh, and it's out of that that this whole tourism industry, the safari industry, has grown. And if it wasn't for the, the, the establishment of something like Fogasa, a, a ruling body that, that governed how guards can behave, I don't know what would happen. We'd be with countries north of our border that don't have rules and regulations and uh, the animals just get hounded. It becomes quite unpleasant for me to, to be in those places and to see these animals being, I wouldn't say abused, but just not given a moment's peace. Oh, boy. This has made everybody Sunday, the little time we spent there. So there were other vehicles waiting to come to that leopard and quite, it was important for us to and see her. We, we, for us it's the beginning, we've got three months, but oh, I just hope we're going to still see her. As far as I know, her territory, I think she's probably in the northern limit of her territory, and I think she's after that she's going to come south. She still has some youngsters, and they, the last we had were a few tracks of her youngsters. Just, just north of camp, on the other side of on our campsite, and it's quite possible that the young what she is doing now is she's patrolling her territory. We haven't seen her doing any scent marking. It's a, probably a combination of scent marking as looking for food. She, to some degree, goes out and actively goes out to hunt, but a lot of it is all by chance. A leopard or perhaps opportunists you can get and in the patrolling of her territory a herd of impala or she comes across a daika or something uh, that hasn't seen her yet, she'll automatically go into hunt or stalk mode and hunt mode and try and hunt it. And if she does happen to get something where she is there and her cubs happen to be to the south, she'll catch something, she might even feed on it a little bit just to replenish a little bit of energy, catch it in a tree because she doesn't want hyena and lion to get it, and then she'll go orphans and bring them back. It's actually a wonderful thing to watch something that I'm hoping we're going to get to see and I try my best to bring that to you is a title to see her coming, picking up the cubs when they smell the blood they smell this animal on her and they know that she's come to fetch them to take them to food and how they think they know where it is and they'll run ahead of her and there's competition between cubs to kill first because at a certain age they won't eat together and they'll start getting aggressive with each other so, wonderful things to look forward to. I'm going to stop here. and have gone down and getting a bit dark. So I'm going to have to say goodbye. 
and it's been a wonderful, wonderful Sunday for us, and I'm sure it has for you too. Where we, there we are, come to you, <laughs> coming to you in 3D. Come on, here yeah, for now. I'm going to be on up late, I suppose, playing with photographs and posting them on Facebook, the Thorny Bush Private Nature Reserve page, and. Uh, I suppose I'll put something on the Wild Earth page as well. Those are the two pages, I w only the two pages that I'll be posting on. Of course, my own home page as well on, on Facebook. And uh, I'll be con obviously talk to you through there. I'll go through questions that have been sent in and see if there's anything that I can answer online if it's going to be possible. If not, please send your questions again. I know when we were with the Leopard and a lot of questions, it was sort of it sort of put questions aside because we don't want to be answering things about other stuff when we with something like a leopard. But we've got time. Tomorrow's another day. My name is Mark. Brian is with me on camera and Brian will be back again with us tomorrow. And uh, Rob will be in final control, maybe with Aaron learning the ropes. But from all of us here at Wild Earth, the Tawny Bush Game Reserve, have a wonderful Sunday, the rest of your Sunday. And for those of you who are already getting close to Monday, have a wonderful week. Don't work too hard. And come and join us again in Africa. Goodbye.